Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Catherine Shelton. I am the co-creator of Tangent, Tangent Templates, Treasure Hunting, and the Amazon Create Space group on Facebook. And what I would like to talk about today is niche research for Amazon Create Space and Kindle Direct Publishing. And we're going to do a five things, five things, five ways to research niches. Now, before we really get going on that, one thing I will say is that this will be useful if you are doing Amazon Merch, Merch by Amazon, if you're doing bundles, or if you're selling anything else online, just because being able to discover and research niches is so, so important to selling online. So let's talk a little bit about CreateSpace and why I am really, really excited about CreateSpace at the moment. So what I'm going to do, let's do a quick search for some of the best selling products on CreateSpace. And here we go, you can see there are actually a lot of Amazon bestsellers that were published on CreateSpace. And here's the really big thing. So a lot of people associate CreateSpace with novels, with sort of erotic fiction, with memoirs, how-tos. A lot of people are planning to write their novels on this. But most of the best sellers you will see on Create Space are low content or blank books. And here are some great examples. So these are all best sellers. There's a sweary daily planner. In fact, there's a couple of those. There's, this is just a daily planner, agenda organizer. So it's a blank book where you write in what you're doing each day. That's a number one bestseller. We've got a prayer journal, kind of a contrast from the get done planner. We, we also have a prayer journal. And this one fascinates me. There is a blank comic book, which is just two to nine panel layouts where you can draw in your own comic. And if you really wondered about blank books, look at this one, a sketchbook, 8.5 by 11 inch sketchbook. People are publishing sketchbooks on Amazon Create Space and they're getting bestsellers. Like you don't have to sit down and write a novel. So let's look at this blank comic book. This is a number one bestseller. It's also got 61 reviews and it has a book rank of 3,764. So if you sell books on Amazon, and I know a lot of you are coming from FBA, you will know that that is an awesome rank in books. It's selling a lot of copies per day. So CreateSpace is serious. You can make a lot of money on CreateSpace if you publish the right kind of books. It's also wide open. Merch by Amazon has had a lot of attention recently. I know there's a lot of people talking about it, a lot of groups. There's also a lot of people creating t-shirts. What I've noticed with CreateSpace is that it's pretty wide open. All those niches are just not saturated yet on CreateSpace. So let's talk about how to find a good niche and what you can do with that. So niches are super important. And the reason is this, if you walk into a shop like Barnes & Noble or Marshalls or any brick and mortar store that sells stationery like Papyrus, Paper Chase, any of those stores, what you will see are lots of beautiful journals and you're very much guided to buy visually. You're like, you, you'll look at these journals and say, that's a beautiful cover. Wow, I, I really want to buy that book. When you're buying online, it works differently because there aren't really any visual shopping platforms. Amazon shows you thumbnails but you have to actually find that thumbnail before you can buy it. So what is important on Amazon and in fact on most other e-commerce selling sites is keywords and niches. People will be searching for things that they are interested in. And if you just make a pretty journal with a pretty cover, here's the problem. If you go to Amazon and you type in pretty journal, for example, I'm guessing we will see Lots and lots and lots and lots of pretty journals. In fact, there are over 7,000 of them. So you don't stand much chance of standing out if you just create a pretty journal. You need to find a trending, interesting subject that people are looking for. So the problem is when you get started working on your blank books, it can feel a little bit overwhelming. You're just like, well, where should I start? And even if you have sort of tangent templates, you might be looking at that journal paper and just looking at it like, okay, 
What kind of journal should I make? And in some ways, it can feel overwhelming. It's like having a blank piece of paper and just, what do I write? What do I draw? Well, this is where it becomes a creative exercise. So the first part of creativity is just divergence. It's just grabbing any inspiration, any ideas you see as you're walking around. Keep your eyes and ears open for anything new, anything novel, a weird phrase that someone says, a new hobby. If one of your friends says, oh, I've just started taking this class in, I don't know, some martial art or, or some craft or something like that, listen to that. Like, those are new ideas. And I always say, if you hear the same thing twice in a couple of days, that's a sign. Like, if you notice something or hear the same thing twice, that's a sign. Research it a little bit further. It might be a good idea. So keep, keep open to what's around you. I love going to places like Barnes & Noble because they have the magazine racks. And on those magazine racks are so many niches. I've seen things like steam trains, crochet, tattoos, motorbikes, military enthusiasts. Like There's all kinds of interesting niches there that would be really easy to sort of overlook. Drones, I saw magazines about drones, VR. All those things are ideas. And what you could do is maybe keep a notebook or just keep a notes file on your phone and just jot down any big ideas you have for niches. So the first part of, of really thinking about niches is look for big niches, first of all, and then go a little bit deeper. If a niche seems too big, like you want to do cryptocurrency, you want to make a book for people to log their cryptocurrency, that would be a big niche. And there's probably quite a lot of competition in that. But you can sub-niche it by either doing different types of cryptocurrency, like Litecoin or CryptoKitties or something like that. Or you can niche it by audience or sub-niche it by audience, I should say. So you could do crypto for teens or crypto for moms or crypto for retired people. So there's a lot of ways of finding multiple niches within one big idea. So with that in mind, keep an open mind. Keep open for any niches that catch your eye. Don't censor yourself. You can always decide against something later. But if you have an idea, write it down. We're going to go into five ways to find niches. Or five of my favorite ways, I should say. Because niches are everywhere. And honestly, you can get inspired walking around Walmart. You can get inspired surfing Wikipedia. You can get inspired... Like, there are just a million, million ways to get inspired. And not necessarily by looking at other people's books. Like get inspired in clothing stores, get inspired at the beach, get inspired by technology. Like there's a lot of ways to get inspired. So let's start with number one. Great places to find niches. Okay, number one for me is conventions and events. And a great way to find these is just to go to convention calendars for major cities. So for example, I'm looking at Las Vegas convention calendar, and this is actually the calendar for the convention center where ASD happens. They're huge, they have a lot of events every year. And what you can do is actually set the number to be a large number of attendees. And the cool thing is you can go to like any major city, San Diego convention center, that also has a huge calendar. New York, Chicago, Atlanta, I'm sure whichever city you're in, and even if you're not in it, you can go and browse for ideas. So let's have a look at all the conventions with over a thousand attendees, and I'm sure we will get some ideas browsing through these. So already I see one, antique jewellery and watches. 7,500 people go to that. So you could do something as simple as even an antique convention book. For people who go to antique shows, you could do like a diary or a log where they can write down all of the antiques they've looked at. I'm sure if you do a little bit of research, you'll know exactly how people work at these shows, what they do there. And then you could turn, like, how can you create a simple book that will make what they're doing there easier? So there's sort of one idea off the bat. The World Tea Expo. Oh my gosh, you could do a tea tasting book. Simple, super simple. I've seen a lot of wine tasting books where you can, you give people simple prompts. So you create a blank book, 
give people simple prompts like type of tea, where it's from, the taste, strength, I don't know, like, I'm not a tea connoisseur, I just drink my PG tips. But a tea book, perfect. Super Zoo, I think that's a pet show, so that would be an awesome one to do. Bridal, okay, so what about a wedding log for people going to bridal shows? Like, I know there's a lot of wedding planning books, but what about a book specifically for going to a bridal conference? And you want to be careful here because you don't want to use any trademarks or make it seem like you're endorsed by a particular bridal show. But there are so many wedding shows that you could create a wedding show planner or a wedding show log where you can write down the people you talk to, people you bought a dress, like the, the dresses you were interested in. Like that would be a really fun book to do. Pool players. Wow, 15,000 people going to a pool playing convention. That's amazing. I think pools like snooker and I, I don't know. Pain week. Now, this is an interesting one. It's for professionals in pain management. So that's another interesting idea. You could do a pain log. I know a lot of people who are dealing with chronic pain need to log like what triggers the pain, what makes it worse. That would be a great thing for a logbook. Like you can go on and on and on with this. So we've got like three or four big ideas just from browsing one convention calendar. As I say, you can go to all the other cities, look at theirs. And actually, if you are lazy, I actually created a list of conventions last year. It's a little bit out of date if you are if if you like specifically want the accurate dates. But most of these conventions, if you're just looking for inspiration, most of these conventions repeat each year. So if you want to grab that, it's on my gumroad there, like if you're, if you're lazy. But hopefully, I mean, you can go and do it the, the free way as well. So you have a choice there. So that's number one, conventions and events. Okay, so now we get to number two in our five ways to find cool niches. And another of my favorite ways to find niches is through Facebook groups. And the reason I love Facebook groups is because they're current. People are talking about issues that are currently happening. Facebook groups that aren't current tend to die pretty quickly. So Facebook groups are absolutely amazing for finding engaged people. And also you can see how many people are in a group. So for example, I've been invited to join the Instant Pot community, which has over a million members. So we know that instant pots, crock pots, all of that is a huge thing. Now, the way you can really, really get niche ideas from Facebook groups is to go to facebook.com slash groups. And what you will see by default are pending invites to groups. So these are all groups people have invited me to. Now, I'm not really interested in those because I tend to have a certain circle of friends who are all in similar niches to me. Instead, what I'm gonna do is go to discover. So you see that I click discover. And this is where it gets epic because once we go past recommended and friends, which are all our own and also local and recent interests because those are all kind of me centric. Once we move past those into business, food, home and garden, arts and culture, we start finding groups that are cool for all kinds of people. Like we get outside our comfort zone, we get outside our little bubble, and we start finding out about all kinds of niches that we just may not have thought about before. So, I mean, here's one under business, Black San Diego, brilliant. Vegan 101, arts and culture, acrylic, acrylic pouring addiction. So that's got 40,000 members. I know nothing about acrylics or acrylic pouring, but it's a thing. Resin art, 20,000 members. So, I mean, obviously this is a big thing. We can go and look at it. Okay, resin, and this group doesn't have any rules. So what's even more cool about this is that if you create your book about resin art, you could probably join this group and actually share your book and get some people who are interested in it. So not only have you found an idea for a book that is validated, and a lot of people talk about you need to validate your ideas before you do them, which I don't think matters for Create Space because it costs you nothing to try a book idea. But this is actually validated because you know there's 20,000 people out there who are interested enough in resin art to join a group and talk about it. 
But also, you have a marketing opportunity because it says this group doesn't have any rules. You can ask any questions or talk about anything. So you could join that group and hopefully promote your book. What I always recommend if you do want to promote in Facebook groups, be nice to the admin. Talk to the admin, tell them what you're doing, be upfront, be honest, say, I've got this book. Would you mind if I promoted it in your group? I'd be willing to give you copies for a contest. Like you can absolutely promote in books if you work with the admin. So great opportunities there in Facebook groups. And again, this sounds like a plug, but if you're lazy, I've actually created two big groups, two big lists of Facebook groups that tell you a list of groups, how many people are in there. And they're all weird and wonderful groups that just fascinated me because of their niches. So there's two curated lists on my Gumroad right there. Okay, so we're talking about great ways to find niches. My number three is trendhunter.com. Now, I love this website. There's so much to this website, though. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of ideas. And you can go down a lot of rabbit holes just by browsing around. But it has some really nice touches, like you can just do show the best. So it comes up with like the best ideas. And what it does is it curates a lot of lists of products, marketing campaigns, ideas from all kinds of different places. So you can really browse around or whatever interests you. I love this as well. You can really dive into this. If you want to understand more about what drives trends, you can read a lot of it here. But they have all kinds of things. You can look at trends by city. You can look at trends by technology. Like these are some of the best of. They have things like customizable off-road trailers. So I know a lot of people are into RVs at the moment. Zodiac-inspired lingerie collections. Tide har harnessing hotels. Tokyo culture. As I say, it can be a bit overwhelming. So one thing I like to do is go to Insights. And from there, I'll select one of these sections, fashion, tech, culture, design. Let's take a look at culture. So this has consumer insights into pop culture. And it gives you ideas of patterns, popularity, how fresh this idea is, non-traditional art tributes to music performers. So it'll give you a bunch of ideas about fine art, in rap culture right here, which is pretty cool. So hip hop statues, comic books about rappers, uh, neon rap portraits. So this is really interesting. This is ways people are celebrating rap. So maybe you might want to do a book about rap. Maybe you want to do a book where rappers can write down their rhymes, write down their ideas. And by browsing this, this will sort of start pointing you in the right direction of what people think is exciting, what kind of things you could put on the cover, what would be appealing to people in this audience. I'm browsing down. So we're in the pop culture section at the moment, looking at insights. This one I love. Oh my gosh. Virtual comedians. So in virtual reality at the moment, the Oculus Go came out this week. So virtual reality is a huge thing right now there are stand-up comedians. So this immediately makes me think, okay, because I, I used to do a lot of open mics, I used to do a little bit of stand-up, and people need to write down their jokes. There's a lot of writing involved when you do stand-up comedy. Here you go, this is a great idea for a blank book. I wonder, I wonder how many stand-up comedy, we could do a comedy writing journal. Let's see if anyone's done it. Comedy writing journal... Okay, someone's done a comedian's journal, chalkboard design. A little bit boring. I'm sorry if you're watching this, but it's a little bit boring. But the right idea. So there we go. I think we've just found a niche that we can absolutely tap. Do some books for stand-up comedians. They don't have to be in virtual reality, but that's a good sub-niche. I mean, why not? So that's number three in my places to find niches. We've had conventions, Facebook groups and trendhunter.com. Okay, so let's move on to number four. And number four for me is trends on social media. So every, almost every social media site you're on has a popular or a trending section. On Facebook, you can see trending at the side in the sidebar. YouTube has trending videos. And I'll also show you 
Instagram is a really interesting one. So if you go to Instagram.com, Instagram actually has a curated feed of the most popular Instagrams at the moment. And it's at Instagram.com slash Instagram. And if you go to this, this is Instagram's own collection of trending pictures. And what I love about this, it's a little bit abstract. So that's the first thing. A lot of these pictures are quite abstract. They might leave you going, what? How do I even think about using this for a journal, for a book? Browse through them and kind of look at the whole. See what images, motifs are repeated over and over again. Like I'm seeing so many unicorns still. I mean, I, I think unicorns are getting a little bit saturated. I hate to say it because I love unicorns, but I do think unicorns are getting a little bit saturated. But according to Instagram, there's still a lot of scope for unicorns, but it's getting weird now. Do you, do you notice this? Like now it's like dogs dressed as unicorns or unicorns made out of carrots or unicorn balloons. So people, oh, and there's a unicorn sitting on top of a cliff. So we talked about sub-niches at the beginning of this video. We talked about ways to sub-niche by finding either a different audience for your niche or finding smaller specialisms within your niche. The other way to create a sub-niche is to intersect your niche with another niche. So for example, dogs and unicorns. That's two niches that are pulled together. So what can you intersect? If you have a popular niche in mind, can you intersect another niche with it to create a sub-niche? So that's one way to use this. You can also just browse for ideas, like what comes to mind? I see like this, I don't know, that's sort of parkour and mountaineering. And cats in funny hats. Uh, let's browse through a little bit more. Pizza? Oh my gosh, you could do like a pizza recipe book. That's a super simple one. Hearts? What about doing a sketchbook where everything people draw starts with a heart? Oh, that would be really cool. So you could create a sketchbook and on every page of the sketchbook, there's a heart-shaped frame. So every drawing that people make in the sketchbook is a heart-shaped piece of art. Like, boom, that's a whole new idea for a book. And, I don't know, so on. You can, you can just browse through this. Records, oh my gosh, what about a log for vinyl collectors? So, just browsing through what's popular on Instagram can give you just a million ideas. Keep your notebook handy, keep your notes on your phone, and just write down those ideas. Once you have the big ideas, you can narrow them down, sub-niche them, delete them if you hate them. Like you, you have that power, but make a great list of niches. Now, I said also other social media. You can also browse Pinterest and find the most popular things on Pinterest by going to pinterest.com slash categories slash popular. So that's another great place to look. It does get a little bit spammy. I notice a lot of Pinterest posts are kind of things like how to lose weight quickly and the miracle eye serum and that kind of stuff. But there are often some really interesting ones too, like when to prune, a guide to pruning trees, flowers and veggies. I mean, a pruning logbook or a pruning diary. Perfect. That would be a great simple book to put on Create Space. A short bob haircuts. So you could do maybe a haircut scrapbook for people to sort of stick in haircut inspiration. Like you have all kinds of different ways you can create a blank book. So that's how you do it with Pinterest. It's pinterest.com slash categories slash popular. But I know you can also get trends from Tumblr, YouTube, like whatever social media you like. Go and check it out and see what's trending on that social media. Okay, so we've gone over four ways to find niches, conventions, Facebook groups, Trend Hunter, trending posts on social media. Now, there are actually two other big, big tools I use to find trends. And those are Google Trends and Facebook Audience Insights. And I'm not going to include those in this video just because it will get way too long. I've talked about them in the past, but I will make two more videos to talk about them specifically for books. So hang in there for those. That's Google Trends, Facebook Audience Insights. I'm not including those in this list, but they are also really, really good places to get ideas. But what I will leave you with, number five, and this is a little bit of a blatant plug, but 
Isaac and I literally use this all the time and it is Tangent, which is our own collection of tools. It doesn't include Tangent templates. Tangent templates is a standalone system that just includes templates for CreateSpace, but it includes a million other things. It's at tangent.rocks, maybe not a million, but quite a lot of other things. I'll show you a couple of the tools I use to generate niche ideas, inspiration for books. And the first place to start is the niche machine. So it says over 15,000 categorized niches. It actually now has 18,000 niches in here. So I'm pretty sure you will find something in here that no one else has done on CreateSpace. There are 18,000 niches organized by category. So what you could do, for example, I mean, you can go through animals. If you look at animals, you'll see we've got like dog breeds, cat breeds, monsters, mythical creatures. What we're going to do is look at back to school. Because I know as I'm recording this, we're in May and back to school season is rapidly coming upon us. And some of the topics in here for back to school are people at school, school clubs, school subjects, school supplies and types of school. So you can make a planner or a composition book or an exercise book or a handwriting book for a particular type of school. So, I mean, you could click through to types of school, get things like Montessori, Steiner, boarding schools, and you could create specific composition books, notebooks, handwriting books for those types of school. Another thing you could do is do uh, school clubs. And you'll see, I'm trying not to show you too many of these because it kind of gives the game away. But you can see, here's an example, school clubs. This gives you the most popular clubs in schools. So Gay Straight Alliance is a huge one, which tells me that if you make some rainbow colored composition books, or maybe you make a planner, like a meeting planner for the Gay Straight Alliance at a school, it could be a really successful item. And what we've done is actually included an approximate search volume in here. And that came from Google. So that is an approximate Google search volume. They do go up and down. It's not a live search volume, but it's enough to give you an indication of popularity. So, you know, approximately 135,000 people search for that each month on Google. Disc Golf, National Honor Society, Color Guard, Art Club. So what you could do is theme diaries or theme planners, theme journals to these clubs so that if people, if kids are going to these clubs, they can write down their thoughts about those clubs. You can give it a cool cover with disc golf on it or origami or whatever it is they're going to do. And, and that would be a really awesome, simple product you can make for back to school. Sort of thinking outside the box a little from all the composition books. Now, there are some other great ways to get ideas with Tangent. The formulizer is huge for me. And if you actually buy Tangent, the, if you buy the annual subscription to Tangent, you get my magic formulas course with it, which shows you in depth how to use this to come up with books, ideas, calendars, and whole products, in fact. So the way I use this is I will choose something like maybe life transitions and choose something from here like I, I don't know, divorcing. That's kind of a good one. You could do a divorce journal where you write down ideas if you're, if you're going through a divorce. And you can do really cool things with this. You can look at perspectives, metaphors. I love metaphors. I mean, you could do like a map, of, like I'm looking at countries there. You could do like a map of my divorce. And maybe you could, you could create a prompt book where people draw out the places of their divorce or the the feelings they have of their divorce. Journeys. I mean, like these metaphors are great. You can do the journey of my divorce. My divorce, uh, members of your zombie survival party. I don't know, maybe you could do your divorce support team and you could like create a journal where you have a, like this, this would be a great page to put in your divorce journal. The members of your support team. Like it just think a little bit outside the box. I mean, I include these things as prompts but you can totally use them in whatever way fits. What's nice about this, you can also create random formulas, like a pride event. What would your partner do at a pride event? So, I mean, if you could create maybe a journal, like a his and his or a hers and hers journal for gay couples, 
maybe theme to a pride event or you could do a pride planning book for coming up with a pride if you're on the planning committee of a pride festival for example now be careful with trademarks be careful with copyright always check out whether something like pride is trademarked whether pride festivals just check out the licensing agreements and copyright on that before you make a product for it but you can totally do a generic book you can also use Tangent, you can use the Sky Palette, you can pull in pictures and it will suggest keywords and ideas to you from there. And of course you can use the Explorer and the Tangent Explorer is awesome for just getting ideas and following them through. Almost anything you do in Tangent, you can click on it to find out more about it. Like Mermaid, for example. I was looking at Mermaid, I can go to Mermaid, I can look for public domain artwork on this. I can go and look for create space books and see what else people are doing about mermaids. So I can see all the books on create space that were made about mermaids. And it has a million other tools as well. So, and Tangent also has Tangent words. So you can literally type in, now you can do this very functionally. You can type in something like journal and see what comes up for journal. That comes up very quickly because I know a lot of people have been searching for journal. And this gives you the most popular products across a variety of marketplaces that are to do with journal. And in fact, so I mean, you can see things like pregnancy journal, travel journal. So this gives you an idea of what's really popular. And you can get quite specific with this. So you can do bullet journal, for example, and you'll see like bullet journal cactus. That's a fun one bullet journal stencil, bullet journal for boys, bullet journal for men, bullet journal for kids. So this gives you some more ideas of what is popular. Bullet journal octopus, that's a great one. Now I recommend being careful with the words bullet journal. I never use those on Amazon and I don't use Bujo either because they're trademarks. So what I tend to do is call it a dot grid journal. And in tangent templates, there is a template for dot grid which is perfect for bullet journals in all the sizes that CreateSpace has. So you can whip up bullet journals or dot grid journals very, very quickly and easily with that. Now, the really nice thing with Tangent is that everything in it, almost everything in it is explorable. So for example, we've got bullet journal for men there. I can click that and it actually opens up the Tangent Explorer, which means that you can go and find out about trends, you've got all these trending places like Google Trends, Trend Hunter that we talked about. You can also find public domain artwork on that topic and you can even go to Create Space and see if anyone's done bullet journals for men. You know what? I don't see any specifically that say bullet journal for men. So it looks like there may be an opportunity there. And again, these are all Create Space. It also lets you search all of Amazon books. It lets you search Barnes and Noble can find there's various other tools here you can even search on ebay to see if they they sell on ebay or etsy or walmart like this gives you the whole scope so that's the explorer tool also you have the sky palette and sky palette is awesome because you can upload any picture it will do image recognition on it it will generate for you ideas and words and suggestions based on that picture so great way to just keep generating ideas, generating ideas. The other thing that's really nice with tangent words is that it gives you this brainstorming section down at the bottom, which gives you more ideas that are related to journal. So you can see there's some fun ones here like confessions, address books, accounts receivable ledger. Like this is kind of word associating with journal. So this will give you some great related words and ideas as well. Court calendar, that's a good one. So Tangent's actually giving us a ton of ideas there. So that's my favorite research tool. I would say that because I'm the co-creator of it, but I think Tangent's really, really powerful for ideas too. So that was my five ways to research niches. We did convention calendars, we did Facebook groups, we looked at Trend Hunter, we looked at how to find trending and popular posts on social media, and we also dived into Tangent. If you've enjoyed this and you're interested in learning more about creating books, I have more videos coming. I'm planning one on keywords, I'm planning one on Facebook audience insights, I'm planning one on Google Trends. 
If you would like to see those when they come out, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get notifications on them all. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, let me know what you think. And also, don't forget to join our Create Space group. It's at facebook.com slash groups slash Amazon Create Space. And also, if you're creating books, easiest way to do it is with tangent templates. Just go to templates.tangent.rocks, templates.tangent.rocks to learn more about that. All right, have a good one, guys. Love you. Bye.